In fact, most white people in America didn't own slaves. That's true, but every white person in America benefited directly or indirectly from the enslavement of African people. And no matter how poor of a white person you are, no matter how hard your life may have been in Milwaukee, no matter how destitute you consider yourself to be, I need you to understand whether you're conscious of it or not, you still benefit from white privilege and black racism. Not you the individual, but your group. Hence the question I get, why don't you allow non-Africans to participate in your liberation struggle? Why did Marcus Garvey refuse membership in the Garvey movement for those who was not African? Is it because he hated? No, the reason we don't accept alien membership in our struggles is because we understand black people have been conditioned to depend on white people to solve their problems. So the reason we choose not to have you present isn't because I necessarily think you're a bad human being. It's because your presence amongst us invokes the Jesus energy. And we will begin to depend on you subconsciously without even worrying about it or recognizing it. So understand that's why we exclude. People ask me, why do you have a problem with interracial marriage? I don't have a problem with white women. I wouldn't want to disrespect or impugn them. I wouldn't want anybody to respect, disrespect my two daughters. My disagreement with it has nothing to do with racial hatred, but everything to do with my love and appreciation of African women. Being an educator who works in the schools, I'm privy to conversations with little chocolate girls you will never be privy to. The ones who are brought to my office for counseling because they don't understand why. They're considered too ugly, not by white people, but by their own black people. You're not privy to the conversations of black teenage girls. Dr. Johnson, what is wrong with black males? I notice that once you get an education, many of you go and marry someone else's daughter instead of one of us. These are the questions I get from high school girls. What am I to tell my daughters when they're old enough to get married and looking for a husband and can't find one because all the black men want to find something else? It ain't about hating white women. It's about loving ourselves. See, some black men practice their own form of eugenics by marrying outside of their race, hoping to kill their complexion in the next generation. Don't tell me I'm wrong. You grew up hating your nose. You grew up hating your lips. You grew up hating your skin. So you planted your seed in European soil, <laughs> hoping that the offspring would be a little lighter than you. Because you would hate to have to love something that looks just like you or your mother. <laughs> now. When I was in Minneapolis a few weeks ago, I got a phone call from a white mother. She said, I'm raising black children. I have children with a black man. Is it okay if I come to the event? Yes, because you're raising our children, and I need you to make sure you do it right. Because too many white women raising black children that they're giving birth to are raising them like they're white, and they are not. And you are not helping an African child by teaching them they are biracial. Biracial is something they invented for blacks who hated being black. It is not a legal term, nor do white folks use it at all, only to confuse you. Frederick Douglass was biracial. Was he ever called that? Not at all. He was included in with the rest of us. 
all during slavery, the products of miscegenation were never called biracial, multiracial, quiracial. These are modern inventions to do what? Divide and conquer, separate and rule, put black people into different groups and make them fight against each other for the privileges that fall from master's table. So for my biracial Africans, I accept you 100% as my brother or sister. We make no difference in Pan-Africanism. Biracial Africans to go around thinking that they 50 this and 50 that. And if we have any scientists in the room, you understand that in the science of genetic crossover, whenever a dominant gene mixes with a recessive, it is not a 50-50 split any damn way. That child is all but 100% African. So what games are we playing? The reason so many biracial Africans like to call themselves biracial instead of African is because some of them, because of the conditioning of the white side of the family, need to feel that they're still better than the rest of us. And that's why they use these titles. And for black men, those of you who have children with women who are not African, I'm going to take you to task to make sure that woman understands that those children are African and you are not going to politically confuse my baby by raising them in a dreamland of your own creation because you don't want to admit that you gave birth to a black child. So, we got this GED test. One of the reasons they created it is because this country of America is moving to mandatory graduation exams across the board for all children in this country. Does Wisconsin have mandatory graduation exam law? Do children in Milwaukee have to pass a test to graduate yeah. from high school? Yeah. So y'all already had it. In Pennsylvania, we became the newest state to get it. In Pennsylvania, we just passed the Keystone Law. Let me tell you about Pennsylvania's law. It may be similar to yours. A child has to pass six of ten tests in order to graduate from high school. If the child fails more than four, they don't get a diploma, even if they were straight A's and B's. Under Pennsylvania's law, if you fail any of the ten Keystone examination tests, your failing score will be converted into a zero and that zero is averaged in with your final end of year course grade, making it impossible for you to pass. Let me give you an example. Your son has a perfect 100% in science class. A perfect 100%. He fails the state graduation science test with a 59. Now, if you average in the 59 with his 100%, he would probably still pass. But because they convert any failing score to a zero, no. the 59 becomes a zero. No. Zero plus his 100 average is 100 divided by 250. He fails even though he had a 100% average. This is what's going on all around the United States to do what? Push us out of any opportunity whatsoever. But if we build our own schools for our own children, they don't have to take their GED tests. They don't have to take their high school graduation tests. They don't have to take their special ed tests. They don't have to take their IQ tests. If we give our children their own educational reality, you can kiss all the new GED and graduation tests goodbye. So what is the problem with Africans in Milwaukee, no matter how struggling we might be economically, we have enough money in this room right now to build a school. There was no lack of Christmas gifts under your tree a few months ago. There will be no lack of clothing for your children during Easter. There will be no lack of chicken wings and pork chops on the 4th of July. You party on New Year's Eve, look at the money that you wasted. And as you waste this money, you begging white folks to do something for your children that is within your ability to do. 
The reason why nobody cares about the black predicament in America, including other Africans around the world, is because you are the only group of Africans on earth who actually has the financial wherewithal to solve your problems without any governmental intervention. But you choose not to do it. Why? Because despite all your trips to Africa, and despite all the books you've read about Kenny, and despite your knowledge of your culture, and despite learning how to play the drum, and despite locking your hair, and despite changing your name, all of these transformations were superficial in character. They were not internal. They were superficial. And because they were not bone deep, your environment hasn't changed one iota since the black book explosion of the 60s. Because all you're doing, black people, is replacing self-defeating, inaccurate information with positive, proactive, accurate information. But the only thing you're switching out of your minds is the data. You haven't done anything about the central processing unit of your computer called the unconscious, which is still being ran by Willie Lynch. So 60 years ago, you had the Crips fighting the Bloods, or this gang fighting this gang, or that gang fighting that gang with negative information about African people, negative information about your history. The black book explosion changed the data. And so now, instead of thinking you started your history in slavery, you know you started it back in Nile Valley culture. Instead of thinking you didn't have your own culture, you now know that you had the greatest and the first. But it didn't change your behavior. Go ahead. Because all you did was switch out the flash drive and put in another one. But you who have a computer know that you can take the data out of a computer with a bad hard drive. And it still ain't going to work no matter what flash drive you put in. Because you switch in data, but you ain't switch the central processing unit upon which the data is processed. So instead of having Crips and Bloods fighting each other, you now have the Hebrews versus the gods and earths. You now have the Moroccans versus the Moors. You now have the Pan-Africanists versus the black nationalists. The socialists versus the integration. You still gangbanging even with the culture. Because the only thing you changed was your data, but you still a nigger inside. And that's why we can write all the books, we can do all the documentaries, we can have all the lectures, but until you switch the unconscious program, nothing will change. And that's why I disagree with some of our historian scholars. I say, y'all did wrong on this. Telling our people that all they have to do is study their history and culture, that's going to fix our problem, use a lie. It didn't even change you. How was it going to change them? Go ahead. Go ahead. Half of y'all talking black, living white, and thinking green. It ain't change you. How is it going to change them? The way we get out of this is we have to recondition the unconscious of the next generation. Yeah. Say the baby. Save the babies. 75% of our energy is going on grown people above the age of 35 who ain't thinking about, thinking about changing. Right. Thinking about changing. <laughs> if you redirected your efforts to the next generation, you can switch out that Willie Lynch shit and put in a new progressive one and have a whole new people in 20 years. But we want to keep on trying to fix people who don't want to be fixed. Don't you know trying to stop an African from loving white supremacy can get you killed? I don't know if y'all saw the news a few weeks ago. There's a drug called Risperdal. Genetic name is Risperidone. It's given to angry black boys to calm them down. 
Well, a group of white lawyers are conducting a class action lawsuit against the makers of Risperdal. Why? Because they found out that the drug Risperdal, this is going on right now. Some of you may have seen the commercials on your local TV. The drug Risperdal has the side effect in boys of increasing the amount of prolactin hormone in the bloodstream. For my women who have ever given birth to child, you know that prolactin is the hormone that helps you grow breast and lactate so you can feed your baby. So guess what this brain drug is doing to black boys? Helping them grow breasts so they can sit still long enough to be miseducated by middle class white women. So for next Kwanzaa, you gotta get them a Kente cloth bah. Some of y'all see these young brothers out there, breasts hanging, you're like, what's going on with him? He's not even overweight, and his breasts is hanging. Because he's probably on that kitty crack. I told you all to stop giving your children those psychiatric medications. They don't need drugs in order to learn self-discipline. The problem is, their parents ain't got no damn discipline, so they can't teach you. ADHD out of control. I told you, ADHD is not attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It's ain't no damn daddy at home disorder. You lock up his father for selling drugs, and then you give his son the same drugs that sent his father to jail so he can sit still in school. And now I got black, bougie psychologists mad at me for upsetting the apple cart. Sending me emails, what's wrong with you? We were doing fine before you came along. People often ask me, why, if this is what you say is true, why are you the only psychologist we know about saying this kind of stuff? Because the rest of them too busy pimping a damn machine. That's why. You know how much money you can make as a black psychologist misdiagnosing children? Too much. Let me say it again. Do you know how many African Senate charter schools I had to voluntarily stop working for because they wanted me to put black kids in special ed who ain't have nothing wrong with them? I didn't say white charter. I said black Kuta Kente drum beating ass charter school. <laughs> so don't think you want to put on a cultural costume and come to me and make me think you care about our kids because I've come across too many of those hustlers in my day. And I want y'all parents to understand that. I don't know if I got African Senate schools here or not in Milwaukee, but don't you trust nobody, black or white, Kwanzaa look or not, because some of them are worse than the whites when it comes to special educating your children. One of the things I want you to sign up for today before you leave, we're going to start the Milwaukee Independent Black Parent Association. One of my New Year's resolutions of 2014 is to organize the National Independent Black Parent Association. So every city I've gone to, every city, since January 1st. Stop. I'm yes, ma'am. She's going to pass it around. We got two of them. One of them going to stay at the merchandise table. The other one is going to travel. Make sure you sign one or the other. Now, let me explain to you what this is. The Milwaukee Independent Black Parent Association, and you do not have to be a parent to be on it. Nor do you have to be a Pan-Africanist. Many of you will never be unapologetically African. It's not in your DNA. <laughs> so you ain't got to be red, black, and green. I just ask you to care about our children. Seven committees. When the sign-up sheet goes around, I want you to sign up for one of the seven. And I'm going to explain them to you at this time. Now, I said one, not two. Some of you are going to say, well, Dr. Umar, there's a couple of those committees I want to be a part of. I don't want you signing up for more than one. Why? Because black people love to sign up for stuff. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> sign up, she you sign in every box. Then when it's time for the meeting, you can't be found. So I want you to sign up for just one committee. 
On the sign-up sheet, your name, your address, excuse me, not your address, your name, your phone number, your email, the section of Milwaukee that you live in. Where does it say city? I already know it's Milwaukee. You don't need to write that. Give me the section of Milwaukee. There's only one section. Y'all don't have like west side, south side, certain? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, just one. I said. So skip that column. And then in the committee column, you put the committee you want to belong to. Now there's seven of them. Let's go through them. Because I need you to know what you're signing up for. Now some of you in here don't want to do no work at all. Don't sign. Just pass it. Don't waste my damn time. If you know that you are not a worker, some of you are nothing but intellectual masturbators. That's all you do is debate theory and ideas. You're a waste of my time. Don't sign my paper. I don't care what your political ideology is. You might be a pan-Africanist like me. But if you are a thinker, but you are not a worker as well, you're a waste of my time. One of the biggest contradictions in this thing called a conscious community, whatever that is, is that most of the conscious people think they too damn smart to do any work. All they want to do is debate and debate and talk and philosophize and they never get around to action. Isn't it interesting that we are the smartest group of Africans ever? Look at the education, the degrees, the research we got. Mastery of culture and history, science and language. We smart intellectually, but dumb as hell politically. We know everything, but own nothing. We got an opinion on everything and have built absolutely nothing. Intellectual masturbation is killing us. We got a whole generation of young African Americans, Africans, who believe that before they can do any work, they got to know all there is to know. I come across them from city to city. Brother, we got to organize our people. Wait a minute! I just bought 50 bucks! And I can't help you until I read all 50. I just bought 30 of your DVDs back! And I can't help you until I watch all 30. Y'all got these people in Milwaukee too. They everywhere, ain't they? Smart as hell, but do nothing for nobody but can find fault with everything everybody else is doing. Experts at criticism. Experts at tearing people down. And they think that because they can find fault with somebody else, that somehow validates how smart they are. So the first committee is special ed of the Milwaukee Independent Black Parent Association. If you sign up for the special ed committee, you're a parent who wants to help us investigate special ed fraud in Milwaukee's public schools. Your job is to find out how many kids are in special ed in each school, by grade. School number one in Milwaukee has the most black boys in special ed for intellectual disability. School number two in Milwaukee got the most black boys in special ed for learning disability. School number three in Milwaukee got the most black boys in special ed for ADHD. School number four, most black girls diagnosed with emotional and behavioral disturbance. We got to collect the data, brothers and sisters, so we can bring about the change. For some of you, special ed is near and dear to your hearts because your children were in it or are currently being miseducated under it. That's the special ed committee. If you work on the special ed committee, your job is going to help us make these schools spend the extra special ed money on the damn children they get it for. Isn't it amazing that the special ed kids get twice as much money as everybody else and yet are still subject to the worst education? Go ahead. Whenever I put a child in special ed, the school gets extra money. Are you aware of that? Right. So let's say hypothetically in Milwaukee, the average child gets $6,000 on their education. So let's say this is sixth grade in Milwaukee, hypothetically. Everybody over here is regular ed. Everybody over here is special. Now, they used to being regular with the rest of y'all until their parents signed permission for them to be miseducated. So once their parents signed permission for them to be miseducated, 
and then they got evaluated by a psychologist who nine times out of ten did not look like them. They got put in special ed. Now everybody over here gets $6,000 a year spent on their education. But once you come over here to special ed, you're not worth $6,000 every year. You're now worth twelve. So the special ed child is a 100% increase in Milwaukee Public Schools funding. So if one child is worth 6,000 for one year, what about 100 of them? What about 500 of them? Do we even know how many black kids are in special ed in Milwaukee? Do we even know what the special ed budget is in Milwaukee? I bet you it's several million dollars. If no one here has ever requested a meeting with your director of special education to find out how is this extra money from Obama and the state benefiting our children with disabilities. Black parents, if you're going to let your child go to special ed, at least make sure you work the system for their favor. Some of you are trifling as hell. Put your kids in special ed and then forget they exist. I'm telling you what I go through on a daily basis. This is Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm a school psychologist for such and such school. You sign permission for your son to be tested. My paperwork says you believe he has a reading disability. I'd like to interview you about Raheem. And you know what you tell me? What you calling me for? I gave the school all the paperwork y'all needed. But there's questions I got for you that are not on the paperwork, like whether or not Raheem was born of a full-term healthy pregnancy. That's important for me to know. Did Raheem start talking on time? Did he start crawling on time? Was he potty trained on time? I need to know because it gives me a snapshot at his appropriate intellectual development. Does Raheem get along with other children? Does he talk? Has he ever had surgery? Does he sleep on time at night? Does he ever complain of hearing noises or saying things? Did Raheem go to preschool before kindergarten? No, he didn't. My son was home with me until kindergarten. So you're telling me the first time that boy ever seen the alphabet was in front of a white woman? <laughs> yes, he was home with me, as I said. Okay? Well, if your son received no pre-academic experience before kindergarten, why are you getting him tested for learning disability? Your son ain't got a learning disability. He just simply ain't been taught by you. <laughs> now parents, you never let a child, third grade or younger, get evaluated for special ed unless you absolutely certain that you are not the cause or that the school is not the cause. Whenever I get a request to evaluate a child who's pre-K to three, red light goes up for me. You know why? Because the child is too young for us to be diagnosing a learning problem in a child who only been learning for two years. Go ahead. So if you tell me your second grade son is having trouble picking up on phonemic and phonological awareness, it's because the alphabet are unfamiliar to him. That's right. Or maybe practice in your home is unfamiliar to him. Wow. Maybe homework in your home is an extinct activity. That's right. Don't get me wrong. We got to fight that system, but some of y'all, right. some of y'all, Got to take responsibility for your role in destroying our little you young people. This ADHD, you know what the attention deficit is? It ain't the child. It's the parent who ain't spending time with their children. You're the ones whose attention deficit, not them. It is normal for a child to go to school trying to get attention from adults because they can't get enough from their parents at home. Right. You did that when you were young. I did that when I was young. My father was in the military. If he was away from home and I didn't get enough of daddy's attention, I'd go to school and act the class clown because I needed validation from some adult. This ain't no psychiatric illness. 
This is what children do. It is a natural response to unnatural family pattern. But they didn't put you on rhythm for it back in the 70s, did it? There was no Adderall back in the 70s. There was no Concerta back in the 70s. There was no Meditate back in the 70s. <laughs> the teacher called home and said, hey, what's going on with him? Maybe y'all need to spend some more time with him. No prescription. But the problem is too many parents got better things to do to raise their damn children. You all doing something else or someone else. So you ain't got time to spend with Raheem. You ain't got time to spend with Rashida. And because America's teachers today are not like the ones who taught you and I. That's right. The teachers who taught you and I were parents who cared about all 30 of them kids. Not in 2014. In 2014, you got these new jack teachers, black and white, who go to work like they're going to the Grammys, who go to work dressed like they're going to the nightclub. You got fifth grade math teachers with stilettos and a mini skirt on, teaching fifth grade boys how to count, and ain't none of them learning the math because they're too busy looking at your ass. <laughs> Am I wrong? What is sicker than a woman who goes to work in an elementary school to get attention from her boy students? Go ahead. In fact, I call it academic pedophilia. That's why I want my own school, because I'm going to have a dress code. You don't come in here looking like that. <laughs> Second committee. School discipline. Isn't it amazing how they keep talking about this black-white test gap? But when you look at the test gap, you find that the reason why a lot of the black kids are not achieving at the level of the white kids is because they get suspended from school so much, right. removed from class so much, that they're not in the class long enough to learn the damn skill. Right. So if you keep kicking me out, how am I going to learn how to read? And then you got the audacity to tell my parents, you think I got a reading disability when you're not even leaving me in class to learn how to do it. Right. Removal from class is one of the biggest reasons for the reduction in black male achievement levels. As you sit here listening to me, half the black boys in America in the fourth grade cannot read on a level. Now, we know that if he can't read by the time he finishes the fifth grade, there's a 75% chance he will spend at least some of his adulthood in prison. So if we as a community don't do something different now, that means half the black boys in America right now are headed to jail. Mothers, be careful who you make babies with. In 1808, the United States government outlawed the transatlantic slave trade. When they outlawed the slave trade, that didn't end slavery. They just outlawed the importation. From 1808 to 1865, the primary means of raising slaves was to breed them. So you had breeding farms where they would take one or two black men and 50 black women, and his job was to impregnate them as soon as they were ready. The same way you breed dogs, they bred us from 08 to 65. Black woman, I'm saying, be careful who you have babies with, because if you ain't raising that child with a real man who's going to look after those kids, then you have just turned yourself and your house into a breeding farm for slaves. So if you're in the discipline committee, I want to know what school in Milwaukee is most likely to expel a black boy. I want to know what school in Milwaukee sends the most kids home on suspension every day. I want to know what school in Milwaukee has the greatest discrepancy between instructional time and test scores. I want to know what principals are most likely to recommend that our boys get kicked out of Milwaukee schools. we got to have the data so we can sit down with the superintendent and demand a change. And if the superintendent doesn't want to bring about a change, then guess what? We can have a conversation with the local school board. We can have a conversation with the state secretary of education. We can have a conversation with the mayor. And although education is not a local function, 
the local elected, elected officials do influence the system. So once you start telling people that if we don't see changes in school, we will see changes in political office. We have to leverage our power. See, Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture said what? If you organize a little, you get a little done. If you organize some, you get something done. If you organize a lot, you get a lot done. But if you don't organize at all, you get nothing done. And organization is not convenient, black people. Sometimes you're going to have to meet when you're supposed to be asleep. Sometimes you're going to have to meet when you want to be watching your favorite TV show. Sometimes you're going to have to bring the children with you. I want you to get this notion out of your head that you can struggle conveniently. Some of y'all want to lead a revolution from Twitter. Some of you want to lead a revolution from your iPad from Facebook and then get mad at the whole Milwaukee when they don't show up to your meeting. Why should I make an effort to come out when you ain't even make an effort to come get me out? Do you see the Jehovah Witnesses organizing on Facebook? Do you see the Jehovah Witnesses organizing on Twitter? No. Even with all the technology, they are at your door. I know it well. My grandmom's a Jehovah Witness. I might be traumatized. But anyway. <laughs> We got to go door to door. That's how you organize blacks. Excuse me, ma'am. How you doing? My name is Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm here in Milwaukee. We organize an independent black parent association. I don't have time for that. I'm not selling you nothing, ma'am. How many children do you have? I said I don't have time. I understand that, but could you just tell me how many children you have? We're taking a survey. I got three boys. Have any of your boys been put in special ed or on drugs? Have they been kicked out of school or going down the wrong path? You got to connect with the person. It's so what they teach us in therapy. Find their emotional Achilles heel and pull it on out. Okay. Well, guess what? We'd like you to come to a meeting because we're putting together a committee right now on special ed. We're putting together a committee on school discipline so we can fight back and stop that from happening to your children. You got two more children growing up. If you get with us and organize, we can probably stop this from happening to your other two children. It doesn't cost you a penny to come on out. In fact, if you don't drive, we will have somebody here to pick you up. 6.30 tomorrow, we will be here, and we ain't leaving unless you're in that car. I share, you have a good day. <laughs> That's how we got to do this, brothers and sisters. Door-to-door -door combat, in the snow, in the rain, and in the sleep. If the people see that we care, they will too. That's right. But too many of us are getting mad at everyday black folks talking about something they like in the condition they're in. They don't want to change. No, the problem is you don't have a good marketing strategy. You got to have a good street campaign to organize our people. They've been asleep for too long and they need something significant that's going to revive their interests. So that's the discipline committee. Third committee is going to be school finance. Those of you who like numbers, we got to investigate the budget of Milwaukee public schools and find out where they're spending the money because it's not being spent on your children. Who gets the contract to clean out Milwaukee's public school bathrooms? Go ahead. Every school has a clean team of a dozen, right? Has a black person ever had the contract? No. And if a black person has never had the contract, why aren't we demanding an opportunity to get our fair share of those contracts? You mean to tell me the same person has had the contract for 30 years? Do you understand that if somebody in this audience had the cleaning contract for Milwaukee Public Schools even for a year, even for a year, you could put at least 100 black folks to work. Who can't clean? Who got the contract to remove the old furniture out the schools? Who got the contract for the pens and pencils? Everything used in a public school is by contract. Why don't none of you have it? I'm not one for handouts and grants, but I have no problem with you making sure you get your contracted allowance of your taxable dollars. Your money going into the system anyway, get something out for your children. Who has the contract for the after school program? Who got the contract for the mentorship program? Who got the contract for the reading and math support programs? <laughs> Do you know how many people are robbing your kids blind? Some of them getting contracts with the district and they've never provided a day of service because you don't even know who they are. Come on! 
children don't drop out of schools until their parents drop out of their lives. Go ahead. Go ahead. The next committee is the social committee. This is the fun committee. This is the committee of parents who are going to put on uplifting, positive, and educational programs for our parents and particularly our single parents. Because I don't know about you, but I'm getting sick and tired of our single mothers being blamed for everything that goes wrong with our children. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. It is not her fault. Stop trying to reduce this to poor parenting. Poor parenting takes place within a political economic context of racism and lack of resources. Do you know that the average single black mom in America is also dealing with a potentially fatal, fatal medical illness? Not only does she have five kids, y'all, she's dealing with heart disease. Not only does she have five kids, she's epileptic. Not only does she have five children, she's confined to a wheelchair. Not only does she have five children, she's developing schizophrenia. I can't blame her for that. The woman got her own personal depression, her own personal food addiction, her own personal romantic relationship problems. She's a victim of domestic violence, poor health care, can't find a job, being underpaid at the job, and then got to come home and do her best with them kids. And the best thing you can do is point your finger at her. I don't blame no black woman in this audience for your son making bad mistakes. I blame all the lazy ass black men who saw you struggling with that boy for 10, 15 years and ain't lift a hand to help you. That's who I blame. It ain't the single mother's fault. It's the community's fault. What is the church doing to help them single mothers? What are you so-called revolutionaries doing to help them single mothers? What are you integrations with your father and one three grants doing to help them mothers? Not blaming on mothers. If we claim to be a community, then we are responsible. Every child who dies, that's all of us. Yes. Only reason why you point the finger because you don't want no damn accountability. Yes. It's easier. But single moms, I do need you to do a little bit better with them boys. Some of you are objectifying your oldest son as your partner mm -hmm. when you don't have one. Go ahead. Not sexually, psychosocially. When mothers don't have romantic partners in their life, unconsciously, without you even realizing it, you elevate your oldest son to your partner's status. Once your oldest son becomes your husband, quote unquote, you're now dependent on him for your emotional support. And you're afraid to chastise and punish your son and hold him accountable because he might withhold emotional support from you. And he's your only masculine source of it. Stop turning your son into your husband. Raise them and stop loving them so much. Some of you women are loving your sons to death, literally. Your daughters are being raised halfway decent most of the time. But look at your son. He barely goes to school, barely does his homework. He tells you where to go and how to get there. Talk back, disrespectful tattoos all over his face in the fifth grade. <laughs> and all you can do is make excuses for why he the way he is because his daddy been locked up. He used to get beat on. He was abused. You making excuses for your son ain't helping him out. Do you think white supremacy going to give him an excuse? If you are raising a black child, especially a boy, your job is to do what? Teach him discipline. And what is discipline? The ability to do what the hell you don't feel like doing when it got to be done. Y'all sitting here listening to me right now. You told him to do his homework. His homework is supposed to be done by the time you get back from Dr. Umar's lecture. But is he doing it without you being there? Or is he watching the Miami Heat versus uh, the Bulls? That's right. Your daughter's supposed to be getting her homework done. But she on the phone talking to her boyfriend. And why are they not listening to you, mother? Because they know when you get home from my lecture, you're going to be too tired and lazy to do anything about the fact that they disobeyed you again. Yeah. Mothers, some of you are raising your sons to be the exact type of a man that you yourself would never want to marry. 
How hypocritical is it for a black woman to say, I want a responsible black man, but your son not? I want a black man with discipline and self-control. Your son has none. I want a black man who will protect his family and look out for his children. But your son ain't accountable to nobody, not even you. And then when he gets up and messes up somebody else's daughter's life, you know what you're going to do? You're going to blame his father and say he's just like his daddy. No, he's not. Daddy wasn't there. He's just like his mother. You made that boy. Now take responsibility. Go tell his wife, I'm sorry, but I destroyed your husband. I see there's a lot of twitching in the audience. I must have struck a few nerves. But it's the reality. Somebody got to say it, y'all. Because it ain't making no sense out here. Next, so the social committee going to put on positive programs for the parents, okay? So we got the special ed committee. We got the discipline committee. Finance committee, social committee, next committee is very important, school policy committee. The school policy committee, you parents are going to do what? Talk to other parents and find out what they don't like about Milwaukee public schools so we can change the local regulations that are negatively and disproportionately affecting African children. Let me give you an example. In Milwaukee, hypothetically, because I don't know for sure, let's say your child can't start kindergarten unless they're five years old. That's a policy. There's no law in Madison that says that. Oh, yeah. Now, if there's a law in Madison that says that, it's a law. You've got to change it at the legislative level. But most of the rules that are working against your child are not laws. They're local policies. I need y'all to understand this. The State Department of Education and the legislature makes the law. They give the law to all the school districts in Wisconsin. Each school district in Wisconsin creates their own policy. For example, if some of you used to live in Madison or you lived in Green Bay or wherever, and then you move here, you notice that the schools operate a little differently, right? Report cards look a little differently. The discipline code is a little bit different. Why? Because every district has their own policy. And the good thing about policy is what, parents? Can change it. You can change it without going to the state. That's for my parents who want to help change the rules. You got a son who's four and a half. Your four and a half year old son, you want him to start kindergarten now. You don't want him to wait a whole year because he ain't five yet. Your son can write his name, he knows his letters, colors, sizes, shapes, his address, his parents' phone numbers, and he can actually sit still longer than five minutes. Oh, yeah. He's ready for kindergarten now. So we need to change that policy so he can go to kindergarten now. There might be a policy in Milwaukee that allows kids to stay on the football and basketball team if they fell in two subjects. Well, we don't want our kids playing football and basketball. If you can't graduate, why should you be allowed to play games? We want the policy changed. 